Affinity Designer may be Illustrator's best known competitor. In some ways, it's frankly better. In others, it is not. Now, I've been using Illustrator for more than 30 years. I've been using Affinity Designer for 30 days. But even in that short amount of time, I have an idea of why this software exists and who it's for. If I were you, my first two questions would be, does Affinity Designer support all the file formats? And does it support artboards? And the answers happily to both those questions is yes, with some caveats. So among the file formats, the vector-based formats, EPS, SVG, PDF as well, the pixel-based formats, Ping, JPEG, and on and on. This program is very good at handling pixels, by the way. Even layered PSD documents, including live text and editable vector-based layers, if you like, and Adobe Illustrator documents. And so by way of demonstration, here I am in Illustrator. I'll select this grassy knoll right here. Notice that I've assigned a roughen effect. It's a dynamic effect, so that means I can change its settings anytime I like to end up with this very spiky grass, for example. Click OK. It's also an object blend, so if I double click on it, select an intermediate object and change its color, for example, then all the other blades of grass will update in kind. Now, sadly, Affinity Designer supports neither dynamic effects nor object blends. However, this is the same Illustrator document. I did open it inside Designer and I can still access the editable path outlines. Now, where our boards is, are concerned, I'll go to the file menu, choose new. Notice this dialog box is exactly like it is inside Affinity Photo. So there's some tight cross-application harmony. I can create an artboard if I like. Notice that, but I don't have to. I could just click create and we have a blank document. If I want it to be an artboard, switch to the artboard tool right here and click insert artboard. And now it's an artboard. What if I want a second artboard? I'd click insert artboard again. And there's that artboard number two. Now what galls me about this is you can't create a new document with multiple artboards. You either get zero or one. That's it. And then you have to add more and you can only add them one at a time. All right, now let's take a look at drawing. I'll create another new document and I'll add some center guides. By going to the guides command right here, all you have to do is click these little page icons. They create center guides by default. And I'll lock them down by returning to the view menu and choosing lock guides. Now I want to create a custom shape. In which case, I've come to the right place because Affinity Designer, if nothing else, provides a heck of a lot of custom shape tools, including the double star. And so I'll go ahead and drag from the intersection of those guys, and I'll press the control key or the command key on the Mac. So I'm creating the shape from the center outward. Add the shift key so that I'm constraining that shape so it's nice and symmetrical. And then I end up with a couple of handles. And notice that we do have two different layers of points right here. I'll go ahead and drag this guy out and this guy in. Isn't that awesome? And then I'll change the number of points to six. So easy, so effortless to work with these various tools. Click on the fill. I'm seeing a spectrum of swatches. You can create custom swatches if you like. That's a whole nother thing. And then I'll change the line weight. I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up just by dragging this width value up here. So you can see that by default we end up with round joints. Unlike miter joints, which are the defaults inside Illustrator, and I need to crank up that miter limit value so that they're nice and sharp. And is that not awesome? In fact, I think it's so awesome, it deserves a subscribe, especially right before I show you something that, mm, is it that awesome? Not necessarily. We've got a pen tool. That's great news because it works just as well as Illustrator. So you can try that out. All the same keyboard shortcuts work as well. But we've got these different modes just so you can check them out. We've got the pen mode, which is the standard pen. We've got the smart mode, which is very much like the curvature tool in Illustrator. I don't think it's as good, but it's there. And then in case you're curious, gosh, how do I draw a straight line in this program? There is no line tool. There is this thing right here, the line mode, at which point you would go ahead and draw a line like so. Problem is the way I work anyway, is I like to click with the line tool and then enter an angle and length value. 
that's not an option here. You have to change the angle and length after the fact from the transform panel, one of the most iffy, kind of almost damaged panels in the Affinity programs. Uh, notice that it's all dimmed right now, if you look in the bottom right corner of the screen, until I switch to the Move tool, which is equivalent to the Black Arrow tool in uh, Illustrator. So that's great. But no, this thing's called rotation. It's not rotation. That would be relative. It's an absolute angle value. So I'll change it to 30 degrees and then I'll change the length to let's say 500 pixels is my unit of measure for what it's worth. And I'll drag this guy. So I'm interested in snapping this bottom left point, let's say the first point, and I can snap it to the intersection of the center guides. No problem. I can snap it to things like the top of the shape. But what I want to do is just drag it by this anchor point. Well, first of all, it's not called an anchor point in this program. It's called a node. And as in CorelDRAW, those of you who've used that program in the past, and notice then I just changed the link. That's not what I want. I want to undo that. I just want to turn off the whole bounding box experience and drag by the anchor point so that things snap into alignment. That looks like a snap, but it's not. It's just a vertical snap. This is more obviously not any kind of snap going on. And so node snapping is a little trickier than I think it should be, but no problem is insurmountable. All you need to do is switch to the node tool. And that's the equivalent of the white arrow tool in Illustrator. Now grab that node and drag it and notice that it snaps into alignment. Now, problem is I changed the angle of the line. And so I'll undo that shift click on that other point and then drag it over like so. What if you want to do it the other way around? You want to take this big shape right here and snap it by its node. Well, it doesn't really have one, and that's because it's a custom shape. It has special attributes. What you have to do is make a commitment by right-clicking and choosing Convert to Curves, just like expanding or converting to outlines in Illustrator. It's got a keyboard shortcut. You can see it right there. And now I'd want to drag this guy, this node, but if I just drag it, obviously I deform the shape. So instead of shift-clicking on all these points, you press Control a Command A on the Mac, and now you can drag one of these like so and have it snap into alignment. And if you ever need to check a snap, because sometimes, you know, the strokes are going to throw you off, then you can switch to the outline mode, which you do by clicking on this option right here. Or you can press Control Y, Command Y, same thing in Illustrator, except that you get to see a faded version of the fills which I think is pretty useful, actually. It helps tell things apart. Now press Control y Command y on the Mac to switch back. Now there's all kinds of things you can do with this Node tool that in Illustrator you have to otherwise do with the Pen tool or the Convert Point tool. Hey, real quick, Affinity Designer is an enormously powerful piece of software. So not surprisingly, I'm just skimming the surface. If you want a deep dive, possibly the best deep dive on any topic you've ever experienced, then join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. You can just do it all here. You could, for example, click to add a point at this location, drag it to a different location like so. I could drag the segment in order to introduce some curvature if I like. I have all kinds of control actually over control handles. And so I'll just go ahead and drag this guy and let's kind of monkey with it by adding a couple of points like so. I'll move this one over a little bit and I'll drag this out so that we have some curvature. And then I'll drag this point over here. And so let's say I want to create a smooth transition right there at this location. Then I can drag this control handle right there and it's going to snap into alignment with that previous segment. Isn't that nice? There's a lot of snapping controls where control handles are concerned that you don't routinely see in the Illustrator. Look at that. You can see I've got, I've got a little guide, a magenta guide showing me I have a perpendicular snap going right now. So isn't that awesome? If you just click on an anchor point and press the backspace or delete key, it will not break the path outline. It'll automatically reconnect the anchor points. I don't want that, so I'll undo that change. And instead, what you do is you alt or option, no, you control click, sorry, control or command click on the segment, and that will make it go away. Go away, you, and it worked 
just beautifully. Oh gosh, there's so many things. Let's say you went around a corner or two. Instead of just clicking on some points and shift clicking like so, just the ones that you went around, you don't automatically get little widgets. Instead, you got to switch to a different tool. This guy right there, the corner tool. And now you drag and you're going to round off those specific points just to make things even more interesting. Let's say you want to convert a stroke to an outline. In that case, what you do is you go up to the layer menu. That's where you're going to find the stuff you would otherwise find in the object menu in Illustrator. And you drop down to expand stroke this guy right here and believe it or not these guys are now connected disconnected from each other that is and everything's now filled path outline if i switch back to the move tool the black arrow tool and let's see what happens if i start dragging it i went ahead and got it that works out great but if for some reason you're having problems clicking on something and selecting it you can select it just as easily here inside the layers panel notice i haven't even bothered to create a layer yet so things are very free form in this panel, but it's a lot like Illustrator's panel. You can rename things and stuff like that. And here's something that bugs me or initially bugged me. I like to be able to marquee a bunch of things like this with the black arrow tool, just partially marquee them and have them be selected. I just did not select anything. In which case, what you got to do is you go up to the edit menu and choose settings and you go to tools and you turn on this checkbox right here select object when intersects with blah blah close and now notice if i just do a general drag i end up selecting all those items just as i would inside illustrator now let's take a look at transformation series power duplication if you prefer and so i want you to see that there's this snapshots panel right here and so I've created snapshots as I'm moving along here. And so I could just go ahead and select this one and restore the snapshot. That's more advanced, but that's something you can look into. And I'm going to get rid of that line. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy and shrink it. And notice that I did not shrink the stroke. And so I want to, so I'm going to click on this item right here and I'm going to say scale with object in order to shrink the stroke like so. And so it, it just everything's different inside this program is basically what it comes down to. We don't really have scale and rotate tools and that kind of stuff. You just do it on the fly with a move tool. But let's say you want to create a little bit of a transformation. The first thing you do, and you got to get used to this, look over here in the layers panel. We just have one item. Press Control J. Command J on the Mac to jump it, jump a copy, just as you would inside Photoshop. And then, so it's not Control or Command D here. And then I'll just kind of drag it over a little bit and I'll scale this guy while pressing the Shift key. So it's a proportional scaling and I'll rotate it, move it over. And now you're thinking, okay, you can't possibly duplicate all that jazz. Yes, you can. Control or Command J. A bunch of times and and that'll happen very analogous by the way some of you are thinking oh wow i miss freehand so much this is the kind of stuff freehand would do that illustrator never does anyway i'm gonna undo that because i want to show you a different way to work and i'm going to let's see just make this a little bigger like so oops looks like i've got a copy so i got a back step a little farther so i just had the one here inside the layers panel and I'll make them a little bigger and I'll press the enter key, which brings up the move duplicate dialog box right here. And then I want to be able to rotate this guy, but I want to do it. I'll, I'll set it to 360 divided by six. So you can do math. You can actually do more math in this program than you can in Illustrator. I think it handles pi. I think you can enter pi if you want to. Anyway, notice it just, it didn't do any, it didn't look like it did anything because, because you know, it was already, well, let's change it to 30 degrees so you can see it rotate a little bit. Well, what we need to do is set the origin point right there. There it is. Now I can set the origin point and I can drag it down here like so. And we should, especially if I turn on duplicate and I say, okay, let's do a few duplicates right here. I don't have any rotation value set, so nothing's going to happen. So I'll change it to 60 degrees. I know that's what I want. And so it's going around almost enough times. I need one more. 
And I'm doing this so that you can see that everything's happening around that origin point. I could drag the origin point to a different location if I want to. It doesn't preview as you drag. It waits till you, till you, you know, till you land until you release. But in that cool, and then you can change this insertion mode is really stacking mode. So you can change how the objects are stacked on top of each other. See the difference? Now, it's not necessarily all together dynamic. It is as long as you have this dialog box open. And so if I now say, you know what? I want this guy right here to be back where it was, to be rotated once again, 30 degrees, right? So it's back here again. And now I want to drag this guy out. This should work. And now they're all going to go out and about. But now I need to crank this up to let's say times two because i want it to be 60 degrees c you can do that kind of stuff it, it's it's wild you, you can just amaze yourself and your friends and then once you're done you can click okay except actually let's see what happens if i drag this up i think i can drag it up and they'll all move out yes i can see you can do that number and so you have all kinds of control click okay the one thing is where it's not entirely dynamic the way it is with a dynamic transform effect in illustrator is if i now take this shape right here they're all different than each other if i take this shape right here and i change its fill color the other ones are not going to update in kind so it's a static effect ultimately it's baked is affinity's term all right, I want to wrap things up here by showing you how to align things to a key object, a very common operation in Illustrator. And so I'll draw a big old circle, let's say like so. And now I'll press the V key to switch back to the black arrow tool, the move tool, shift click on this guy. And I now have alignment options up here in the context toolbar. So I'll just align things to the center and you can see both objects move. No, no, when's the last time you wanted that? And so I'll undo that change. In Illustrator, you would click on the key object. In this program, you alt or option click. That's the only difference. It's just that it's not documented very well. And now notice that the circle is the only shape that moves. One more thing I wanna show you. It's kind of goofy, but it's a whole lot of fun. Notice listed at the bottom of the custom shape tools is the QR code tool. All you have to do is enter a URL and then draw with the tool, maybe change its fill to black and it's gonna work. And you can confirm that by scanning this to go to my website and signing up for my free weekly newsletter. And that's just the beginning. Seriously, I've shown you maybe 10% of the program. If you want more, comment below. If you have ideas, let me know those too. And then subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I cover what. And for a deep dive on affinity design that will blow your mind, join me at patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. That's it. Now you're done. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.